Hey everybody, Galusia here, bringing you another episode of my Let's Play with No Man's Sky. Starting off how I start most of my playthrough days, which is searching the computer archives, because you can only do it once every hour and a half. Let's see what we get today. Personal upgrade module. Scanner module. Huh. Alright. A scan radius. Wow. I mean, that's really good if it was more than 8%. 8% is kind of a joke. Okay, well, whatever. So, <laughs> we are going to do this. Search an abandoned building. I like the sound of that. Oh, there we go. Ooh, it's way off planet. Okay. I'm going to go grab this copper really quick because I really need... What the hell just happened? I really need to get some... Chromatic metal, and then we'll go check that out. Oh. Well, hello, floating crystals. Those are worth a ridiculous amount of money. Holy shit. I tend to save these types of things, though, because if I need them later, like... Obviously, that's really difficult to make and would be very expensive to buy. It's like, lose money now, gain abilities later. Oh, hello. Ah! Oh, God! Oh, fuck a bunch of that. <laughs> nope. Oh my god. No, I am not. I don't have enough uh, firepower to fight one of those, like, ATST walker sentinels yet. Holy shit. Yeah, if you ever see those things, like, you can just dig straight down in the ground and fuck off. We did get a quad servo, though. That's a big deal. We probably got that from killing the, the dog-type sentinel. Um, they This is used for uh, some advanced crafting, and that's one of the only ways to really get one. So that was a good score. Things that we were risking our life for uh, are basically worthless in the grand scheme of things, but it's whatever. <laughs> I'm just, I'm literally just, I'm waiting. I'm going to wait for the Sentinel search to cool off, and then I'm just going to go back to base. Okay, so I expanded my base really quick, and I made a medium refinery and this is a big deal for a very key reason so first of all it means that we don't have to use the portable one if we don't want to anymore um, as that one can only you know it has to be powered with organic material right so I've got condensed carbon in it and it can only cook one thing, right? It cooks one thing into one other thing, and that's how it works. Um, whereas with this, you can cook two things and get to something in return. And this is where you can really start to experiment with stuff. And I would start by experimenting with oxygen. Oxygen, uh, which apparently can be turned into carbon, is really good at turning stuff <clears throat> into more valuable stuff. So let's do some quick 
math. So cobalt is worth 198 units each at a zero percentage value. Okay. And then oxygen is worth 34 per unit. Okay. So their combined value per unit is 232. It takes both of these will two of these will turn into five of ionized cobalt which means I'm taking four of something and getting five of something so I'm getting <clears throat> excuse me I'm getting more of something in return right this process is I'm basically gaining like almost four, almost four times the value. I'm turning these two things into like, e even though the units are different, like it should be almost four times the value when it's all said and done. And ionized cobalt is my goal. Like that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get ionized cobalt and I'm trying to get so much of it that I can you know like all the money that I spent buying it in various systems like this is how you get paid back right because even if you don't do any tricks to fix the market and like change percentages and all this stuff if you just straight up buy it obviously it's still worth it because the ionized cobalt's worth more and you get more for it because you're taking four of those other things and making five of this right so that's one th reason to really want to get a, a medium refiner. The other reason, I'll show you here. And so eventually, I'll have to create like a, a daisy chain of these buildings. So I'm gonna, they're just gonna go off in that direction with a bunch of straight things, just boo 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 boo, and it's just gonna be refiner, 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's a sight to behold. And then, like I said, experiment with it. Just start throwing stuff in there. See, like, what oxygen can do with stuff. Like, oxygen is, like, the number one thing. And it's cheap. It's much cheaper than cobalt, anyway. You should buy oxygen everywhere you go to really take advantage uh, once you get a refiner. So you can see how much you get. And you can see that the stack is worth 1.6 million right whereas this stack which is almost twice as big a cobalt it's only worth 1.3 million and this one's only worth 284,000 so i mean you can very clearly see the value difference there right the only catch is most systems don't sell ionized cobalt and i only want to sell it for places where it's sold cuz again my hope is that i create so much of it that I can crash a market. I don't start selling ionized cobalt until I have stacks and stacks and stacks of it. So this, I will literally just uh, put this in storage and I'm just gonna start packing it all in until I have enough. But then, so the other thing you can do is all this goop that you clean off of stuff, it's actually pretty awesome. So residual goop turns into viscous fluids right and then viscous fluids turns into living slime see that so then living slime turns into runaway mold and I'm gonna make some of that now so that you can see what that does because this is the only one that you're probably not gonna actually find you know all these other versions of slime you can find and refine them into a higher form the runaway uh, mold you're not going to find. That's where you you know you have to actually start making it. We'll just, I don't know, make 50. I forget how much it takes, so we'll make 50. Okay. Runaway mold literally turns into nanite clusters. So it takes five to make one. So this is how you can farm nanite clusters. And if you have a ton of units, a ton of money, 
and you're doing other things to like really grow your money fast because again later in the game you're gonna have so much money you don't know what to do with it you can find trade terminals that where they literally sell they're where they uh where they're literally selling like goop so you can buy it and you're basically essentially then turning units into nanites so that that's once you get to a point where you have the kind of money where you can afford to do that you're in a really good spot like you have now you know set yourself up for success where you're literally just printing money because you can make so much of it and then you're printing nanites and nanites is where it's at obviously so just putting that out there like that's now that we have that like we can really start changing how we make money but it, it takes money to make money and we're gonna have to buy a lot more uh, cobalt and oxygen to make this really work this uh, radiation planet by the way has proven to be an amazing uh, location for stuff like this so a, a lot of the green I came here earlier, I wasn't recording, I was just gathering stuff, you know, so it's like nothing, no big deal, but tons of green. Water is typically where you'll find your green stuff. Your chlorine and your salt and stuff like that. You see, now you see why I've been saving this residual goop. Because if you, I mean, which I understand, if you didn't know it makes nanites, like, I wouldn't be saving it either. Like, it takes up a lot of real estate in your storage and it's worth virtually nothing if you just sell it as is i mean if you have the room you may as well like even if it makes you know hardly anything but yeah it takes up so much room like why would you save it but obviously as it turns out you can turn it into nanites like it's totally worth it especially the living slime since that's already at the almost last form doesn't have to be farther or something refined except once. Okay. So it looks like he gave us the blueprints for all the storage things. So up until now, I've been spending five of the salvage data things to learn them one at a time. But it seems like he has given us the recipe for all of them. Yeah, he has. So see? So, I mean, you do these and you'll save a ton of time and resources because you're going to learn so much just like from him directly you know which is why I try not to get too ahead of myself but okay so we need to go to a Korvac base station which we can teleport to one because I've been to one already so oh let me get rid of this crap in my inventory first Whoa. Ooh, it's class B. Damn. It's got a pole splitter and a uh, ricochet module already on it. It's pretty sick. The thing that sucks is, like, when you start installing stuff, like these things, um, I can't transfer them. At least I don't think I can. I mean, you never used to be able to. Okay, hopefully this is badass. Nah, that's pretty good. Mining speed, heat dispersion, and fuel efficiency. I will take all of that. Let's get our scientist. I actually really, really like the science terminal guys storyline it's really interesting and you can learn a good amount from him see we can now make acid who doesn't like acid he gives us a lot of blueprints for things that are like advanced materials that we need to make advanced things so for later game stuff uh, he's very important See, like, up till now, like, we have to buy 
microprocessors. You know what I mean? So to learn how to make them, obviously that's handy. Like I don't have to spend like 50 grand buying one to make something. Okay, so we have to go to a cave really quick so that we can get some marrow bulb. I don't think I have any marrow bulb. I don't think I bothered gathering any. No. Man, look at that I nice cobalt. Sorry, stacking up. Huh? Huh? Not a lot of caves. It might take us a minute just to find one. Okay, this is technically a cave. Yep, there we go. Nice. Okay, we're up. It's these things. Ding. I'm gonna grab a bunch of them because not only he's if he's asking for it in return for the blueprint uh, for microprocessors, then it's probably going to require Marrow Bolt to make microprocessors, so it's worth it just to grab a bunch. Plus, no harm in getting Cobalt while we're here, because this stuff is expensive to buy, so if we can get it for free... Yeah, it's, his story is weird and kind of sad. Like, he starts to help us, but then, like, we kind of... So we find out that the Corvac are like all connected in like uh, kind of like the Borg from Star Trek, you know, like they're all like one consciousness and he gets disconnected from that consciousness because he's helping us, which makes me sad. I've been really uh, ignoring these dehydrogen crystals, but coming up pretty soon, I'm actually going to need a lot of them once I get a freighter, which the next episode is going to be my focus, by the way. I'm trying to just build the base, obviously, as much as I can, so I'm just doing a lot of... I'm doing a lot of the missions that... Um... I'm doing a lot of the missions that I need to do to get additional terminals and to learn blueprints because I've been spending these salvage points on blueprints that I'm going to eventually get for free. So it's kind of silly. So I really want to kind of rush through that. But I really like getting a freighter. And it really is like a game changer in terms of like what you can do in the game. So next episode, like we're going to do a lot of exploration so that we can hopefully find a free freighter. Ooh, bunch of runaway mold. I'll take it. That's, li that's funny because literally this very episode we were talking about how you have to manufacture that I've never gotten it in any type of way in like the wild before like I've always had to manufacture it so that's interesting see the our science unit is corrupted by me so they quarantined it. They see you. Creepy. But yeah, so I, I feel bad for the scientists. He definitely... I mean, we eventually kind of make it a little bit better for him, I think, but he definitely struggles. Him helping us has uh, altered his reality. Ooh. That's right, I forgot about this part. We have to wait an hour and a half of in-game time before we can talk to him or do anything about that. So, the scientists 
storyline is on pause. So we're gonna talk to the overseer. Acquire Pugnum. Fifty. Do I have fifty Pugnum? I do. Man, we are just rolling through these quests. Let's go. Oh, we got a movement module. Probably don't need another one of those right now, but... Let's see if it's any good. Whoa! For a Class C, that's pretty good. Uh, the jetpack tanks, over 100% is pretty awesome. Everything else is obviously super low, because it's a Class C, so it's focusing on one thing. But that one thing is pretty decent. Only my class A and my class B. I mean, honestly, this class C is arguably better than this class B. So, I'll take it. We're just running out of inventory slots because we keep getting technology. Holy shit. Well, that's usually way more expensive, so that's all. See? This is why you do these freaking quests, guys. You could totally skip these quests and just play the game, but you're going to be missing out on a lot. Alright, what does this give us? A little bit of damage, huge clip size, reload time, shot per burst, not bad. Okay. So we're going to be purposefully summoning sentinels so that we can trace... Uh, their energy spikes when they teleport in. Hopefully there's something to be learned here as well. That would be nice. Wow. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay. Physics. <laughs> Looks like I've already been here because the door is already blasted open. Sodium, pure ferrite, and chromatic metal. Well, that's annoying. I only have some of that on me. Okay. Uh, pure ferrite is easy enough. The chromatic metal is what's a pain in the ass because I'm going to have to find copper. Unfortunately, I don't have the water jet upgrade. There's a, a water jet upgrade that you can get for your your um, exosuit that makes your like jetpacks way better for underwater travel. So you'll be able to travel underwater a lot faster. I haven't gotten it yet because I haven't really had to interact a whole lot with water yet, but obviously I am now. <laughs> oh shit, ton of nanites, nice. Oh, hello. I don't really feel like dealing with you right Oh wait, actually shit, if I go into space? Hmm. Oh, hello. <laughs> yeah, we're not dealing with a sentinel walker. Okay, hopefully they can't find me in here, and I'm going to let this cool off. So, I don't know if it's still like this, but back in the day, if you had sentinel activity like this, where they were trying to kill you, and then you just said, ah, fuck it, and you flew away then what would happen is you would actually get attacked in space by like sentinel spacecraft and they're pretty tough and they can actually summon like a sentinel like i don't know what you would how you would describe it like a sentinel like you know battle cruiser like a full ship like it it gets pretty dicey Locate and activate a portal. Oh. 
random subterranean relic just sitting on the ground. May as well pick it up. Ooh, a hundred words. Man, we are, and like, that's like majority of a keen too. Yep, that's what the portals look like. Yeah, you can use these to go anywhere in the galaxy. They're pretty cool, actually. You typically use them a lot for the joint missions that you're going to do with uh, other actual players that you can get, like, from the thing. But you have to know, like, if you, like, you can actually look these up online. These are universal. So, like, if you know the glyph coordinates to something, you can go anywhere. Has a very Stargate feel to it. Does the whole like poof outward and all that good stuff. Into the pool though. I've actually never done this before. Like this part of the storyline. I've played this game a lot, but I've never carried through the um Apollo Artemis storyline. I've always just kind of skipped like I've focused on just the terminals and then Ooh. Oh. Oh. Before you talk to the Atlas, click on all these balls. He'll wait. Like, he's not going anywhere. Some of these balls won't do anything, but a lot of them will give you knowledge of the Atlas language. I think you... Every time you go to another, like, version of these like places or whatever you can learn like i want to say three words of the atlas language so you just have to keep like running up to these balls and hope that you get additional words because atlas language takes a while to decipher because this is pretty much the only way that you will learn any of its words okay well great we got one word. Awesome. Hello. Let's say hello. <laughs> Submit? I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> I grabbed a warp cell before I left. Usually, both of those lights there will give you warp cells. I should have clicked on them before I talked to them. I have no idea what's happening, by the way. I've never done any of this before. Well, at least it's saved. Where the fuck am I? Okay, well, my ship is nearby. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here, guys. Cliffhanger! So, next episode, we will visit this, because there should be a trade uh, thing inside, so that'll uh, allow me to free up some inventory space, and then we're going to go see what this mysterious distress signal is. Like, God, I have so many questions. There's a lot going on. I'm super excited. 
this uh, game has taken a lot of twists. So, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate the view and support as always, and I will see you next time.